The way we consume and share news today it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online from the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media. And we're joined by Erica. Good morning. Good morning. It's festival season. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting clips out of Coachella and it's really exciting. Yeah. Mm. I wish I were there. I wish I were there Any too. festival. Any music festival. <laughs> I, I was too late to, you know, booking my ticket to the Soul Jazz Festival. Oh, no. oh I mean, what I else remember is you new? said you were looking into that. I was, and then I, I hesitated because I thought, do I really like crowds? The introvert in me said no. And then now I'm looking back. <laughs> Maybe I do like that kind of crowd. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think sometimes even if we feel lazy or, yeah. I don't know, a little bit daunted by being surrounded by so many people, we sort of have to like put ourselves out there. Yes. It's a little too late, yeah. but I don't know. I still have Diane, so I might ask her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump into a closer look at Woodstock Music and Art Fair in 2023, a major music and art festival that has clearly a pretty exciting set of lineup. <laughs> yes, um, Woodstock Music and Art Fair 2023 um, is going to feature, among many artists, some very familiar names, including hip hop duo, dynamic duo, mm. rock bands, Puhal, No Brain, and Yukjuan band, artists like Kim Do Gyun, In Suni, Kim Gyung Ho, Kim Wan Son. Um, and the announcement was made on Friday. Uh, the announcement finally came. Everybody was asking, so when are they going to announce the lineup? You yeah. know, because the festival, it's its not that far off, actually. It's its not. We'll get to it in just a moment. Yeah. And I've got to say, the lineup tells me it gives you all kinds of mixed cues. What kind of genre are we covering? Just about everything. Yeah. I mean, you started with Dynamic Duo and ended in Insunian Sunyan Kim Wan Son. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're covering uh, many different eras of uh <laughs> Korean music. I think so. Yeah. So this is actually the first time the legendary festival is taking place outside of the United States. That's pretty important. Yeah. And of course, where do we have enough space to accommodate? I'm, I'm helping a lot of people. Yeah. You know, Woodstock, first of all, is the mother of all music yeah. festivals. I wouldn't be exaggerating if, uh, well, all the rock music festivals that exist today were inspired mm. by Woodstock. Um, it's going to be taking place over the course of three days on July 28th, 29th, and the 30th in Pocheon in Gyeonggi-do province. And Korea has been really lobbying hard over the years to bring Woodstock to yeah. to Korea. I mean, the, the whole theme of Woodstock is what? Love and peace? Yeah. And Korea yeah. being the only divided country mm. in the world, you know, there's that message. And um, you know, this is a it, this is a great uh, opportunity for I don't know people in the music business to make a lot of money as well. I was gonna say a network. I mean, it seems to be an exciting uh, list of headliners. Yeah. So we'll get to it in just a moment. But I've got to say, I didn't put the obvious two and two together. Love and peace being the yeah. central theme. Uh, While well, the Korean Peninsula, look at what's at stake. Yes, right? that's right. And I was thinking, July twenty eighth. You have months ahead. <laughs> I realize we're halfway through April. Yeah. So look at that. It's coming up really quickly. That's right. All right. The big question. Who will be headlining Woodstock 2023? Probably one of the biggest questions on everyone's mind. Yeah. Well, have you heard the band Loudness, which is um, one of the most popular Japanese heavy metal bands? Mm. Well, Loudness has been announced as the first headliner of the festival. I'm sure there'll be more announcements coming up okay. in the weeks ahead. Um, this band was the first Asian rock band to land on the Billboard 200 ah. chart uh, with its fifth full-length album Thunder in the East which was released back in 1985 I have to say I I am not familiar with this particular band are you a big heavy metal person I used to listen to some heavy metal back in the day oh, I, yeah I, so I was like okay I understand why I have no idea who loudness is but uh -huh. time to go ahead acquainted clearly because they're headlining at this year's yeah. Woodstock okay now other artists on the first line of announcement that came on Friday included Ian Mi, An Chi Hwan, Lin and Ali again like you said it's an 
eccentric mix <laughs> of mishmash. Some of slow artists. jams in between. I like that. That's right. Now, organizers did say they will make a second lineup, uh, announce a second lineup at a later date. Who knows when that's going to be? Mm. But uh, again, getting back to the the whole brand value, the name yeah. value of Woodstock. It's one of the most iconic names in the world of rock festivals. Uh, it's 1969 festival featured legendary artists like Jimi Hendrix, The Who, Who? Santana, <laughs> and a lot more. Yeah, of course. And the festival continued uh, throughout the 90s, 94, 99, uh, even into you know the 21st century, 2009, mm. to celebrate its 25th, 30th, and 40th anniversaries, but it generally saw mediocre success over the years. Like it's heydays behind us and it's iconic and its name still Mm -hmm. lives but I mean I don't think you could outdo the legend of 1969. That's the trouble. But I mean there's still buzz, enough buzz around Woodstock. Mostly positive but some unfortunately (laughs) trouble uh, not for all the best reasons. Yeah, it's a long story. I don't want to get to every detail but uh, earlier this year in January they opened early bird tickets at the time the organizers had zero information to give on who would be performing at the festival, which probably never happens. Um, Usually a music festival of this scale announces the headliner at least six months in advance, Mm. some close to a year before the festival is held. And then the organizers work really hard to prepare, you know, for the big day. But, um, you know, people are saying, wait, have they got this? (laughs) Are the organizers doing what they're supposed to be doing? Do they have the artists? Exactly. Um, Okay, so at least they have some names to provide um, in the weeks ahead i'm sure they'll make more announcements i I mean uh, they say no news is bad news in in the press and pr we'll have to wait and see does westock live up to its name and if there's more news we'll be sharing (laughs) them with you first thing in the morning (laughs) all right let's jump into our second story of the day south korea is paying young social recluses 500 dollars a month to re-enter society the idea seems to be uh, hopefully no one left behind that's right um some south korean youth are so cut off from the world these days the gov- government is offering to pay 650,000 won mm. or $500 a month to basically re-enter society uh, the ministry of gender equality and family announced uh, last week that it will provide up to you know 650,000 Korean won per month to isolated social recluses uh, in a bid to support their psychological and emotional stability and healthy growth. Just being out and about, yep. it costs money. And it if does. you want to bring them out of darkness and into society, yep. a little bit of seed money is required, even if it's a bare minimum of seed. Yes. So then, okay, who, who are these targeted youths and how do we go about defining reclusive, lonely young people? Yeah, around 3.1% of Korean Aged 19 to 39 are defined as reclusive, lonely young people, Mm -hmm. and they're defined as living in a limited space, in a state of being disconnected from the outside world for more than a certain period of time, Mm -hmm. and have noticeable difficulty in living a normal life. And this Mm -hmm. is according to the Korea Institute for Health and Social Affairs. And that makes up that 3.1% makes up about 338,000 people across South. Korea with 40% beginning their isolation in adolescence, according to the ministry. So too many of them, it starts way too early and at a critical time Mm -hmm. here where you're supposed to form friendships That's right. and and learn about yourself and as much as your society. Yep. Sometimes it surprises me how, how these seemingly small numbers, 3.1% of Koreans aged between 19 and 39, that amounts to substantial. Amount, That's right. right. 338,000 people being offered a little bit mm-hmm. of uh, money to rejoin society. Why are these youths so isolated at such a young age? Various then? factors at play, uh, you know, including financial hardships, mm-hmm. mental illnesses, family problems, or health challenges challenges. Uh, The new measures specifically target young people as part of the larger Youth Welfare Support Act, Mm -hmm. which aims to support people extremely withdrawn from society, as well as youths without a guardian Mm -hmm. or school protection, who are at risk of delinquency. All right. So maybe give them a fundamental one of the many fundamental solutions to keep them out of trouble. Let's talk about the allowance and maybe the specific demographic it actually targets. Sure. Uh, The monthly allowance will be available 
available to reclusive, lonely young people aged 9 to 24 who live in a household earning below the median national income, uh, defined uh, by the government as about 5.4 million won per month mm. for a household of four people. Ah. Uh. Yeah, not, not two, not okay. two, four people. How can then these eligible youth apply for the program? Yes, yeah, so they can apply for the program at a local administrative welfare center. Other guardians, counselors, or even their teachers mm. can also apply on their behalf. And the ministry has stressed the importance of active support, mm. saying uh, these youths can have slower physical growth even mm. due to irregular living, unbalanced nutrition, mm. and things like that. Mm. They also shared future plans for further action as well. So uh, more parts of South Korea, like local governments, can mm. implement similar um, programs as well. Uh, in, in fact, I mean, it seems that Seoul City has something already similar in place. That's right. Okay. Yep. All so, right. I mean, I've got to say this phenomenon is not unique to South Korea. Should there be more intervention? Mm -hmm. I think so at government levels. And Japan might be dealing with something arguably quite similar. That's right. Okay. Uh, oh, we do have time for a final story. Let's make our way there. Uh, an elite athlete emerging from a 70 meter deep cave after 500 days of solitude as part of her decision, by the way, willingly to go yeah. down below uh, a social experiment. That's right. She is an elite athlete. Uh, she's a mountaineer, actually, from okay. Spain. And uh, she uh, emerged from a cave 70 meters underground in Spain. She spent 500 days underground alone as part of this uh, social experiment uh, you know the researchers were trying to understand the effects of long-term solitude and uh, this, is, this gives me anxiety I know just reading the headlines <sighs> right so um, well she finally came into sunlight last Friday <laughs> she said she was in need of a shower she hadn't had a single shower uh, in more than 16 months <laughs> anxiety anxiety Erica. and that's that makes my skin itch I don't know <laughs> and she said she hoped to have uh, a plate of fried eggs and <laughs> fries with her friends in the ultimate comfort food I guess and I was going to say that sounds like a pretty humble meal after 500 yeah, days of so solitude. She, she descended into the cave on November 20th of 2021. What were you doing back then? I have no idea. <laughs> I trying don't to remember. deal with the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, what did she do underground? She documented her experiences with cameras. Um, she knitted. She read a lot of books, actually. She recorded her day to day. And, um, you know, she exercised underground, of course, for her health. And uh, she said that the biggest challenge that she experienced while she was underground was she was once invaded by flies, actually. That does not sound like fun. They came in, they laid their larvae, and uh, she one day found herself like, you know, surrounded. She was covered with flies underground, which was definitely not healthy for her. That was the only challenge she said she faced. And then she was surprised to find that a lot of had changed in the world. Uh -huh, uh -huh. She was not aware of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Okay. Uh, or the death of uh, Queen Elizabeth II. She oh, wow. specifically told her crew she did not want to know what was happening outside in the real world. So okay. she had a lot to catch up on. Okay, now that she has reemerged, her name is Beatrice Flamini. I, yeah. I'm hoping that she'll reveal the foundings of her study. Yes. Um, at one point, did she feel so lonely? It, she got a little bit of anxiety because just thinking about it makes me lonely and you anxious. Know, you know, when the crew actually reached her on Friday to get her out yeah. because her 500 days were up, she said, already? Okay. I'm not ready. In fact, I don't want to go out. That's what she said. Not for everyone. So she's on a different level. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe we're not the same kind of people. No. But thank you. That's really interesting. <laughs> we appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.